What's up guys? This is the Rifleman and we are back to bring you the next episode of my Empire Total War Let's Play as Louisiana. So to remind you what happened last time, uh, we have managed to take London. We've also got this army under Theodore Mirabeau um, over to the west to help protect London against these armies. There is a slight risk that someone could march down this road and hit the city, um, which wouldn't be great, but considering they're so weak, but this army would be Sorry. ready to immediately reinforce it. We've also got forces here in Dublin. We've also got an army up to the north near Edinburgh. Um, but attacking Edinburgh won't solve the problem because Britain still exists here in Courland, which is surrounded by Swedes. And I might actually, maybe down the road, attacking Copenhagen might be a useful, uh, a useful way to potentially force them to make peace. Maybe. I don't know. Um, but let's hop over to the Americas. And I probably am going to knock out uh, the Plains Nations and the Inuit Nations, but they're both protectorates of Dagestan, so move you up to there. Um, they're both protectorates of Dagestan, so that might draw a war in with everyone. But right now, things are okay. Uh, okay. Ah. Mr. Sirkoof is ready and ready fraction again uh, so spices is actually the most valuable out of the trade zones so let's take Mr. Sirkoof you go off to the East Indies you occupy Demerara um, so we do have this Mughal bubble of troops which I'll probably deal with you Under association, let's let's put them in Curacao. So let's move Ajax out of here. Get you over to Campiche. So these guys will be ready to catapult onto, uh, not catapult, just to launch themselves at this Mughal territory because not real, no real any point, not really any point in doing it now. Oh, I'd like to have some money first. And there's our Caribbean fleet. We've got. Ooh, so I send you guys over to Mr. Sirkoof. That reminds me actually, looking at the world map. India. Let's take you and let's do some raiding. Only against empty ports, there's no point. Well, I don't want, I'm not seeking battle at the moment. Okay, so you're full. Not full, but okay. They're, about, they're all occupied. Let's get back to Ceylon. Uh, Ceylon is being repaired and the army reinforced um, initially it was to have a push against the the, the Mughals because they, are, uh, they were our only enemy and now uh, we've actually got a lot of enemies maybe it might be worth attacking the Spanish to try and get some pressure off of the uh, off of the Austrians and try to get their port open once again um, I mean I know Austria hates us but oh, okay, we can't actually give, we can't actually do anything can't give them any tech. Um, but now I've got Cambridge through to, thanks to attacking London, which is a modern university, so we don't need a actual university in, uh, in in our capital, in Louisiana. And it also probably means we can do away with this chap here. Um, mainly because we've got... We'll have three universities, and three is usually enough for me. Uh, we've now got a modern university, so we don't have to worry about... Uh, well, we'll still be quite competitive on the offensive front. Well, on the offensive... Well, well, I say competitive on the offensive front. I mean in, more, in terms of uh, keeping up with what's going on. We can be a bit aggressive with our research techs. And as this is being destroyed, we don't have to worry about garrisoning this town. Because the clamour for reform is creeping up, which means we can actually tax you now. Um, let's go check out... Yeah, so I wasn't taxing them to get the population going. Population isn't going, so I'm no longer taxing them. Now we do have our last attempt at the, uh, the peasants' strategy. Uh, you are a good army, but you're still needed. Actually, no, you're not needed. Um, so, the Plains Nations. Who are you? Friendly with, obviously, Dagestan, the Inuit of Dagestan. Yep. Dagestan is allied with a bunch of people. 
but the thing to watch out for is these protectorates. I really can't be bothered to fight all these little nations at the moment, especially when I'm at war with Spain, uh, Spain, Sweden, the Ottomans, and the Mughal Empire. I've got plenty of enemies to focus on already. I don't need to add lots of little ones, but that probably does mean we can take this guy and march him over or up here really to a port and get him shipped over the Atlantic to help fight against the British um, cause this is going to take some doing because not only have they got they, they do still actually have quite a lot of troops um, British infantry is actually quite good and there's some pikes more pikes grenadiers, hussars Scottish infantry, fusiliers you're in quite good nick with a lot of with a good chunk of cavalry and some artillery. And they do have armies at sea, such as Jonathan Edwards, with actually quite a lot of fairly elite infantry and pikes and melee infantry. Some of these guys are done for, like them. They've been just sat there, and they're now just fortifying their position. Um, then we've also got a small army over here, under Rufus Whitfield. Again, cavalry, elite infantry. And I mean, what this is doing is showcasing all the reasons why I'd love to do a Great Britain campaign. Uh, with the additional... Well, the, Britain already has a fantastic range of units anyway. Um, but now with the additional units mod, they have even more. Which I think is so cool. But right now there's not a lot we can actually do. These guys are all replenishing. or well, the ones that matter are replenishing. Because um, that army is pretty much gutted. We are exempting them from tax, but it might actually not be... It makes no real difference. So I might actually just tax them. Now I'll get us five grand, which will be enough to repair one of these buildings probably yeah so just from taxing london we can, that's just enough money to repair the british museum which is plus five happiness in both quarters and a bunch of town wealth summers at house which is plus five repression um but yeah we have no also you have no priest in cambridge we've just taken it over um, hartford's carrying on with interchangeable parts fort frontiac is going on with power loom because again we've lost a load of trade income which means i want to buff my tax income mainly because america there aren't there isn't actually a huge amount of uh high tax regions in the states i mean philadelphia is losing out to detroit back here but it's because detroit has a bunch of uh towns i mean upper louisiana was doing well until the uh Cherokee went and took it over and destroyed all our buildings, which we have to rebuild again. But for now, I think we're doing okay. We don't really need any military techs now. It's mostly expanding our expanding our uh, our industrial techs, and I'd probably like to try and get down to quick climb, maybe. Um, but anyway, let's hit end turn. Because I've been wittering along about what's going on in this campaign for a bit too long, and now we get to see absolutely massive amounts of british shipping so let's see what they do i mean I, I can't imagine they'll let us get away with what we yeah sounds about right um so the first army is pretty elite lots of swiss lines swiss guards mercenaries aren't that great in the thumbnails they're their uh their coats are always shown to be like uh, us minutemen but on the field they usually seem to adopt colors relative to the nation that they have employed them which is cool yeah we stand a good shot of this they got lots of cavalry to be aware of though what's that so that's one two three four five six seven eight well nine including both the general units so we don't really want to charge up too much especially as they've got three units of pikes which are very dangerous we're gonna to want to use our guns let's take them out so these are useful for us uh and we can wipe them out as long as we get the the set out i'm pretty sure we've got a good opportunity to the teams for field artillery team ah this is a bit pants All right i'm gonna to want to be over here um i need so my infantry is good but I do want to take advantage of my superiority in artillery. I mean, unfortunately, this layout 
Okay, I can put two guns into the front line and drop these guys back here to keep lobbing round shot at longer targets. I mean, hmm. So what is tempting, because I'm probably going to have to hold fire to do this, is let's... <laughs> Cavalry is worthless. Um... You guys can all deploy stakes, so in front of our line, just everyone drop stakes. Howitzers can drop back here, probably dropping carcass shot. General hunker down. Okay, right. I mean, I definitely took way too many units to do that. I didn't actually check if I left anyone behind either, so that could have gone really badly wrong quite quickly. Um, so, they've deployed quite far back, which is actually useful for us. Get both the howitzers firing round shot. Okay, the the guns at the back focus on this three pounder horse artillery unit. The seventeenth and the eighteenth, when they are able, can fire at will, and will probably also bombard this pike unit because we really don't want those coming near our lines. So these guys form quite a dangerous combination because the cavalry force you to form squares and that means you can't provide a good amount of firepower to repel pikemen so our artillery is going to not be very good close range about here because all these buildings will provide good cover i don't really have any skirmishes to occupy this building with which i would have liked to have done to both focus fire on this Swiss Pike unit which means you guys you're focus firing the regiment of horse but that's probably not needed anymore let's get one of you after this Swiss line unit one of you after that Swiss line unit let's see if these guys are uh... yeah we're gonna charge the guns right into a set of spikes beautiful that's enough to wipe out the entire unit by itself, those spikes. They're going to get a few kills as they retreat backwards into them. Yes! Let's turn the volume down on my headphones. So are you going to try next? The 13th. A lot of cavalry. Regiment of horse, heavy cavalry. Cassars. So, the second regiment of horse have broken the 13th and the next to try their luck. Our artillery team are doing good. They killed five men, destroyed one trailing team. These poor souls. It's their turn to charge in. They've been engaged by the first crackles of musketry, but when they hit the spike, the cavalry defences. That's what happens when you try and draw a straight line. They go the 13th. Will there be another cavalry unit aggro to come kill us? <laughs> yep. Look, in comes the 17th.
Okay, but that regiment of foot of uh, infantry is probably dead enough. Just keep bombarding, even though the field of fire isn't great for that kind of thing. These pikemen should get uh, shot to bits with my infantry. I just want to see these guys get chewed up. My unit at the back is still bombarding this unit. Not doing an excellent job of it, but then again it does have one understrength battery. So much so they're not actually firing anymore. Okay, they won't shoot the artillery, but they'll shoot the 4th Light Hussars. Spread my infantry reserves out. There we go. These pikemen are marching into just a, a terrible, terrible field of fire. I mean, the artillery is coming in, but it will not save them. As you hear all the units making ready. Unit already die. No. No, the general's steaming in, but he's not coming into attack. Okay, let's pick the targets. Pick the infantry that's marching to the battle rather than it's currently over there. Swiss guards with canister. You hit them with canister shot. Ooh, excellent shot, sir. All these mercenaries. Yeah, so they're now shed moving uh, brown coats like the uh, Minutemen, but these guys actually look pretty good. I'm trying to whip around the flank. engaging them. Hey, the general made it into combat. They engage him in the, in the glorious battle. Does mean fewer men to engage the musketry, to engage the uh, pikemen that is. Goes to pivot to face the Swiss pikes. They should, yeah, they got a good position. The gunners are ready. I think the shots landed about here. Let's get one out, sir try and provide some support against the first of foot guards. You know, Swiss guards that have closed in very, very, very close to us. Okay, so here we have our first foray with pikemen. But they're in the crossfire and they're upset about it. Oh, they've, they've recovered somewhat. Here comes the carcass shot. Misses. Damn. Send the 58th to reinforce their line.
how are my cavalry not tearing them a new one? Not my cavalry, my infantry, sorry. Good. 58th, fall back. New men, form line once more. Everyone's focusing on the 83rd. Charging with colonial line. So that's why I'm setting these guys up to form a secondary defensive position. I probably want my cuirassiers to run around the flank a bit. The cavalry here just to hit the general's bodyguard. Get the cavalry get my cavalry out of the main fight. They can charge into the rear like this. Pick new hearts targets, let's start round shotting some of these dragoons to the rear. These are pikemen. Line infantry against pikemen isn't actually that bad of a fight. Um, so right now I'm relying on morale. The impact of my corral being my cavalry being morale based rather than rather than actual uh, impacts. Here are them. Here are some hussars coming in. You guys form square. Bring the 58th down on that flank. Okay, I think the action, the word of the day. Good. Okay, you guys. Run past. Run past the battle line. Let's protect the 10th. Colonial Light, your job is to hold the line while these men get into position and fire at will. Oh, look at this beautiful, beautiful sight. Look at all that heavy cavalry. Look how well they're doing as they lose most of their men. So our light cavalry is broken. The 83rd is staying in square formation to try and defend defend itself against the Hussars. You guys drop into square. Same with you. You guys stop firing. Start dropping climb against the militia that are coming in to reinforce. Yes! Chase them down, look at that. Oh, can get a bunch of free kills from the pipe and spikes. Who are you? Dragoons, eh? Bring my battle line back around to bear. You don't shoot. Stay in square formation. 
Mercy, so this is exactly what they can... Uh, what having a mixture of melee and cavalry and stuff can do is that it forces your men to form squares, which means that your infantry then consequently suck against uh, defending themselves against almost any sort of infantry. Artillery can now focus fire on counter battery. There we go. You men take that defensive position back up again. As we pour fire onto the fifth foot guards. I mean, they are hit hitting some of the uh, some of the shots against these trenches. within range. Yeah, we are shooting back at them there. Okay, let's push these guys actually forward. Where's my cavalry? Got some cuirassiers. I think the best bet is an overall general advance towards the enemy rather than a specific rather than trying to uh, more surgically kill their kill their guns we need to make ground and make it quickly Cassiers, you guys need to get ready to uh, harass the fifth when they break. Bayonet charge these light troops. These guys advance on the artillery. There we go, actually made it into combat before they got to shoot at us. And actually, from an ammunition perspective, they're not looking good anyway, my men. Eh, supposedly they're winning, but they won't be able to keep up with their. Uh, rate of losses as we are. The farmhouse is doing some work in both directions when it comes to protecting us from artillery. Oh, who are you? How weird of a position is that? Semi general, these spikes won't hurt him because they're friendly. No, there's definitely a question to be asked about how do they how do the spikes know who's friendly and who isn't but yep see straight through and over there we go and they've all fled yeah, let's end the battle there because I'd rather end it and hopefully they get some time to replenish. So we did lose a thousand men. So our position isn't strong. So what we'd like to see is them leave us alone. Some raiding's fine. Ooh, do we intercept? Uh, I think the answer is no. And hope they don't attack London. 
Uh, we probably want to intercept this because I think it would become a delicious river battle. Because I am. This is Theodore here. He's sat on a bridge. We might get attacked from both directions, which means you will be a very understrength force, which is not to worry about. Then we've got two across the river. I think if we don't attack them, then they will. Uh, they all they will lay siege and attack London. So we kind of have to. Um. Good excuse to kill a whole bunch of Irish volunteers. Well, but not specifically the Irish volunteers. A whole bunch of line infantry. Um, yes, we will have to be... Well, this is actually quite a good strength unit. Um, but, looking at the timer, I believe it's time to end the episode. So, thanks for watching, guys. Hope you've enjoyed, and we'll see you next time for, uh, hopefully, a bit of a defensive action near London. Cheers, everyone.